Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break. I am very excited to be sharing this tutorial with you. We're going to be making a glitter material in Redshift and Cinema 4D. Have a look. Before we jump straight in, I want to make everyone aware who's watching this. This is going to be a bit of a long tutorial. It's a bit advanced. If you're a beginner or intermediate, you will definitely get something from this. But don't be too hard on yourself if you're not getting every step. Remember to comment below, ask questions, get involved, like, subscribe, all those good things. I always try and reply as quickly as possible to the comments. Okay, so just to um, show the scene, basic plane, I have the sphere that we're going to put making our glitter material on. And we just have this HDR and an area light. The area light is in the shape of a disc. We have a bit of spread on it, so we can see more of the glitter material working. Nothing too complicated. Let's turn on our IPR here and make sure your renderer is on. We want to go down to materials and create a car paint. Yes, we are using a car paint to make glitter. It's a bit of a cheat, but it works quite well. We want to select our base layer diffuse, set this to zero. And because I don't like this violent red, I'm just going to put this to white. It doesn't actually make too much of a difference in your final result. Edge fall off, we're going to set to point one. What is edge fall off? Edge fall off is basically if you see a car at different angles, especially if it's like a very sunny day, you get a shimmer of color when you're looking at a car at different angles. And that's what that basically is. The higher this value is, the more that shimmer of color covers when you're looking at a car at different angles. We don't really need it. So we're going to set to point one. And then our base layer specular, um, put this to zero, basically kind of takes away some of the energy in the material, which we don't kind of need because we're going to be applying this in different ways through the material blender. The most important parameter here that will really bring the material together is metallic flakes. If you look at a car material very closely, you see kind of a, it, it's broken up by these flakes of paint in the material. Some finishes on a car have, have more of this because some people like that look. We're going to first set our glossiness to one. That's telling Redshift we want these metallic flakes to be very glossy, which is what we want for something like glitter. And then we're going to go down to our decay distance and we're going to set that to zero. What is decay distance? Decay distance is a parameter that tells Redshift when the metallic flakes appear. On a really sunny day, let's say for instance, you're looking at a car paint material, you'll see more of that breakup in the metallic flakes as you get close, if you look at the car paint closer. Setting this to zero tells Redshift we always want to see it. We want to set our scale to maybe 0.2 and you'll start to see this material break up more and these flakes come out. Put our variation to 0.9 and put our density to 0.65 and you're getting a really nice breakup of the material here. Now, before we move any further, we want to change our render settings because we don't want to be slowed down in the process. Um, and we want to tell Redshift what to focus on. This is actually a good tip if you're just building out something specific and you don't need the other parameters that Redshift are adding to the render settings. Turn off your automatic sampling and tick reflection, refraction and light. We are going to add samples to your subsurface scattering as well. And we could just put this to 256 and that actually tells Redshift where we want our samples focusing on. Just it speeds up the whole process and you can see results faster and all that. And we can add more samples if needed uh, later down the line. Maybe let's set our samples max to 32. And we want to add a bit of color to this. So press C when you're in your node editor and add a ramp. And we want to put this ramp into the metallic flakes reflection general color. This will allow us add a bit of color vibrance to our flakes eventually end up being our glitter material. We go for a hot pink. Cool. The next thing we want to add is a material blender. And we also want to add another material because we're going to start blending materials together. We're going to set our material blender into our output, surface output, and we're going to put our car paint into layer two of material color. Don't worry, your material hasn't been hacked by the Russians. It's still there. We just need to pull it out using the material blender. Bring our material blender into our base layer color and you're only going to see um, this material for now, but we'll we'll break this down. Change your preset of your 
material base to aluminum, aluminium, whatever you call it, it's called aluminum. We then want to add a ramp, um, which is going to be our roughness ramp. And let's just bring this to, to a darker gray, lighter gray. So we get a kind of a, a, a matte coat. Actually, that's, that's way too bright. Down here, change in the change the interpolation to linear and actually do the same on your other ramp that you've added for your car paint material. Plug this into your reflection roughness and you'll see that kind of sheen. And we're just doing this to add to that, you know, that realism to the glitter material. So we want to take our color ramp now and we want to plug it into the reflection of our aluminum material. We now want to just open up our subsurface scattering and bring our absorption scale to 0 0.1. And we want to bring our refraction and transmission to 0 0.1. Okay, so we now want to start bringing out our car paint material with those flakes. And how do we do that? We select our material blender, we go into our blend color and we go towards the color white more and that the whiter you get the less we see of the base layer and we're blending them in so maybe up to here and we're pulling out our material this aluminum material allows us to pull in some interesting effects that you know you're not going to just get by just having the carpet material and there's going to be more to add here also we're going to add a new material to this the next thing we need to do here is we want to add a new material and blend some more properties in this, this material. This is actually, this light is looking a bit hot. So let's bring this down to five, maybe. Let's add a new material. And let's put this into our layer one. Change the material here to color edge and tint. And we want to take the same color edge and tint from our aluminum material. Material. So we can just copy the hex value here, add it to our reflectivity here. And we could do the same for our metal edge tint, which is just veers towards that blue. We have set up this plastic shimmer to take away some of the metalness of our material. I want to just bring this up to maybe this diffuse color up to a more white. Look, maybe just add a tint, like the, the tiniest bit of blue to it. Um, let's see how that looks. Okay, cool. Brilliant. If we rotate here, we can start to see that glitter look coming through nicely. The next thing we want to do is add the same roughness map, not that one, this one here, to our reflection again. And that will just, again, take away some of that shine, add a bit of a matte coat to the whole thing. Uh, select your layer one material. You want to go into your overall and we want to add some emission weight. We want to put that to 10. We want to make our emission white. And this will really shine up our material here. Okay, so we have this material we've created. We've brought up our emission weight. This is important to note because we'll see this later when we turn on some of the post effects. And in our material blender, our blend color is black. That means we're, see we're not seeing this in our view at the moment. So let's open this and we'll show this material coming through. So the more we go towards white, the more we will see of this material. So that is currently too much. We don't want that. What we do want, though, is we want to bring it down and just add. We don't even want it to be that high. And remember, if you if you feel you're not seeing the results you want, you're not seeing a difference. Always use your snapshots here. And that will give you an understanding of what's kind of going on. And it's super helpful. So, you know, let's go back into our material blender. And let's actually bring that back down to black. And that should update now. And let's see the difference between the two. 
and there is a difference like it's so slight but it will make a difference in your overall material because you're slowly building up you're getting like just a little bit of shine and emission across the whole material it's almost like almost like a little bit of a fake subsurface scatter the next thing we're going to do is add a bump map this bump map is going to hopefully bring out some of those flakes a bit more so press c max on noise and let's bring in a bump so let's bring our bump into our aluminium material and put that into bump map and let's also add it to our plasticky shimmer here and let's input our max on noise into here make sure this is set to height field and you can see our bump map's already taking effect here, but that is not how we want to do it. Let's select our max on noise. And I think the best noise type would be displaced Veroni because it's all these like you'll see as we scale down. This is actually looking quite nice the way it is, but we definitely want to bring out those uh, those uh, metal flakes a bit more to just amplify the glitter. So make sure your noise is selected and Bring your scale down to 0 0.05. Let's see how that looks. Yes, and we're just we're just pulling those values out. And let's maybe change our scale here. 2.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Maybe bring our high clip to 0.9. By bringing in the low clip, you're kind of clipping out some of that noise a bit more. Bring our height scale down to 0.5 maybe and we're not going to get as much bumpiness here let's just change our render settings control b to open up your render settings and let's just bring this to 512 so we can just get less noise because the difficulty when you're creating a very detailed complex material like this is you, you struggle to kind of see what is noise and what is not noise so we've set all our subsamples are overrides to 512 and i would obviously encourage you to play with these values there's no right setting for this let's maybe bring this up to 0.5 okay now our nodes are a bit of a mess so let's clean up by pressing shift l and we get a nice clean automated aligned node system here which is great now i would say we are pretty close to nailing this um there's always more that you can tweak and stuff but to really pull out the glitter of this node here which is our first node that we started with there are several things you can do you can first of all you can take your color node here you can copy paste and you can plug in a new node and you can add some different colors some random colors maybe let's see how that looks change the colors here maybe you want to go brighter and you want to just have more sparkle and maybe you want to go deeper on the purple that will add a different shimmer across these flakes and you can even scale these flakes maybe bring them up by 0.5 and you can see that again coming through a bit another way you could make this car paint node stand out a bit more is you could add a color correct node take your ramp your color ramp plug it into the input of your color correct take your out color and put it into the car paint this will allow you to color correct just the car flakes here which is very handy so bring the gam up to two bring the saturation up to two glitter flakes stand out a bit more so let's actually start seeing this in action happening take a picture then if we just plug that back in you can start to see difference so you can see there by plugging in that node we've just we've changed it slightly given it a different look and it separates it more i think with the glitter it doesn't need to actually look like be physical glitter it just needs to have that se separation that shimmer and we're also doing it with that bump and last but not least you will really start to see this come out when you add some post effects if we do a streak maybe bring some flare the threshold of the flare down you'll start to see like the emission come out a bit more so as we turn you can start to see actually those individual pieces they're getting a little there's a little bit of flare attached to them you're getting you know 
these rays bouncing off. Let's actually bring up our scale of the flakes so we can see even a bit more here. And that material really comes out. And let's just pop it onto our plane here. It's super shiny, which is very cool. Let's turn off our flare, maybe not our flare, but our bloom. Threshold is probably too low, to be honest. Let's go in here. Let's just bring down the intensity a little bit. And you can really see that all these layered materials are bringing something different and adding a different element. And we have our material nearly finished. Um, let's go back into our material blender and start to see if we can. Let's actually add a camera here. This isn't the best way to work. So let's just go into our camera. Just put it wide so we can start to see more of the scene. Select your material blender. Now I have this set to black, so we're not actually seeing our layer one more. And just bring up this to gray and we'll start to see more shine here a bit, which is nice. There you go. That kind of that plasticky layer of emission is starting to really come through here. Make it a bit darker. And maybe bring down the blend of our layer two. And there you're seeing it just a completely different effect by just blending these two layers differently. I would actually maybe even go a little bit darker here. Just a bit. Brighter. If we want to see more of those flakes density, bring up our scale crop image here and just do a bucket render. And that's quite cool. You know, they're too big here for the bucket render. Let's bring back down to two. And let's actually start playing with the post effects a bit here. Nice detail. You can add some streak and you'll, you'll really see that glitter effect come through with adding some streaks flare a little bit of flare because the, as the glitter catches the camera you'll get some flare maybe add some bloom which will brighten up your flares a bit um, so there's lots to play with here and you can definitely change stuff around to get your own glitter look and um, let's take off the glitter from the plane. The materials in your scene will affect the look of your glitter. You're going to get different bounce of light. Yeah, this is looking okay. This is looking okay. Let's press Shift L. Arrange our nodes nicely here. And, you know, we have our nice glitter material. I hope you got something from this. Hope you enjoyed it. This is a long one. There's a lot to get through. Please comment, like, subscribe below. Did you like this? Is this a format we can do more of? You know, deep dive into complex materials. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently. Look forward to doing more videos very soon. Thank you for watching and goodbye.